Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is an exciting one because I'm going to talk to you about the 10 best books I read in the first six months of 2022. I enjoy doing these kinds of videos because uh, hopefully I'll read some more great books in the second half of 2022. So not all of these will make my best books of the year, but it's great to shout about them at this point as well. Um, if you've been watching my channel this year, you may have noticed that I've had a pretty weird reading here in which I haven't been loving as many books as I wanted to. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but I've been having a hard time finding books I love. But fortunately I did have 10 books that I want to talk to you about. Um, but as I was saying I've been having a weird year, these are in no particular order um, and could change day to day, so I'm just going to go with them in the order that they are written down. And the first one that I remembered is one that I've really recently finished reading, I read this in June, and that is The Betrayed by Rieni Akake Melvin. This is set in the Philippines in the 1980s I believe, it is just at the end of the Marcos regime when, with the new president in charge, and it was interesting reading this now because in May um, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Uh, got elected president in the Philippines so um, you could see how a lot of the themes in here, the ideas of or even though there had been a change in regime, a lot of the people who'd been involved in the old regime were still at the top, things like that were resonant to today um, because this is still what is going on in the Philippines. This is the story of a family, um, the father of whom dies at the very beginning of the book, were involved in the resistance to the Marcos regime um, and they'd moved to San Francisco to be safe, um, um, but he dies, uh, he is assassinated at the beginning of the book and it's about his two daughters who then go back to the Philippines with their mother, one of the sisters, the elder sister, marries a man who was the godson of General Ferdinand Marcos. It's a very kind of slow moving book where not a lot happens, we just see their run up to an election where Arturo, this godson of Ferdinand Marcos, is uh, running for election and how his relationship with his wife and also his wife's sister um, and their all of their relationships to the Philippines. Um, the, the wife has had a uh, former lover before when she was a teenager who went missing um, and she's being haunted by ghosts. There's a lot of uh, haunting going on in here, how the past haunts you and how um, the terrors of the regime haunt people as well. It travels around the Philippines, a lot of it is in Manila but we do also go further south to other islands and just explore what that time was like, whether uh, when there were six attempted coups in a year um, and the new regime is trying to stabilise itself um, and the violence that it will go to and the violence that people will go to in their relationships as well in order to stabilise and keep control. It's a book with really well developed characters although they are very unlikable so if you need to like characters I don't think I would read this book because you go in sort of liking one and then it changes um, but they're all like very flawed people um, dealing with a very difficult situation and it is one again where there's hard to describe the plot because although stuff happens it doesn't happen in a way that's like consequential as you would expect in a plot it just sort of happens and then the next thing happens um the writing is really interesting kind of dark um not dark in terms of there are dark there are dark things happening but just the tone it feels very dark and very like close and claustrophobic um and i really enjoyed that that um it's not super lyrical um it's just I don't know, it just builds an atmosphere really, really well, um, which is something that I love reading about. So yeah, I really enjoyed this book and it quite surprised me. Another book that surprised me was The Magician by Colm Tabin, which I read I think back in January or February. And this is the story of Thomas Mann and his life. Thomas Mann was a German historical fiction writer who began, who was born in the late 19th century and who um, lived through the First World War and then was... Um, had to flee during the Second World War because his wife was Jewish and because of their like political affiliation he ended up in America. Um, and this story is about a very complicated man who has a complicated relationship with politics and with his family, which again, well, not one with a huge amount of like consequential plot, um, but explores character in a really in-depth way and is also incredibly beautifully written. Um, Thomas Mann himself as this complicated character. And then also what I loved about this book, um, which I've talked about before is something I love in books, is like big complicated families. Thomas Mann had four children with his wife and all of their children are very interesting and weird. Um, and like there are the two eldest, one of whom's quite depressed. They're both like really artistic and they are quite political as well. And that's one of the reasons that they have to flee from the Nazis. Um, but they are such big characters and really well described. And I love all the relationships between them. Thomas Mann himself is quite an understated character, complicated and um, but sitting on the fence a lot of the time. And he, he does eventually speak out against the Nazis, but he's not 
a perfect like person um in that situation but his family are much more outspoken and much more over the top and his yeah the whole thing had an element of like fast to it it's quite comedic whilst also at the same time being very slow moving and like I said some brilliant character work. Another book that is very dark and has uh, very difficult characters is The Discomfort of Evening. I read this book when I was reading books by Northern European authors, a vlog of which I will leave in the cards above. It's a really weird dark book. I know a lot of people have found it very uncomfortable and very difficult to read. It won the International Booker last year I think or maybe the year before um, and it is about a young girl. Uh, her brother died in an ice skating accident and this family is quite a religious family in this small community in the Netherlands um, and it is about the ways that this family kind of slowly unwind and the dangerous and dark things that happen. Um, so there are trigger warnings for all sorts of things here from animal abuse to sexual abuse, incest, there's a lot like of really dark stuff like I was saying a lot of abuse and um, that was really hard and shocking to read. I did find it difficult to read but I also found it so well done it felt so like we were from the perspective of this young girl and her detachment and her grief I think are so really well portrayed the detached melancholy tone I found really beautiful and I really enjoyed reading and again it doesn't have any it's not that lyrical beauty it's just this sort of stark beauty which I found myself being more and more drawn to this year I think it explored the psychology of these characters in a really unflinching way and allowed people to be unlikable and go to their furthest extent which I think can sometimes be left out of books and I just really liked the way that it did that. Um, it is difficult, I'm not going to deny that and I think if you struggle with that sort of thing then it wouldn't be for you but for me I thought I would struggle with that because I often find myself avoiding books that deal with particularly like sexual assault um, and I didn't struggle with it in this one and I think it just felt so not gratuitous. It felt very shocking and very difficult to read but it didn't feel like voyeuristic. Next is a collection of poetry which is Honorifics by Cynthia Miller and is my favourite collection of poetry that I've read in a long time. It explores ideas of family and of her Malaysian uh, Chinese heritage. There are poems that are um, overlapping and talk about the use of language in Chinese culture, the honorifics um, and the way that that affects relationship. It talks about like Greek gods and there was one about jellyfish that I really really enjoyed. I find it hard to talk about what I liked about poetry this far away from it because I'm so removed from it now um, but I really loved it I thought it was really beautifully written without being over the top um, I found myself struggling with a lot of poetry this year because I found it more impenetrable um, and like I do have a master's in poetry so I should I shouldn't find it so tricky um, but the poetry that I like is somewhere in between the sort of Instagram poetry and the more like impenetrable stuff I like the the way that Cynthia Miller was able to use language to explore things in a clever and interesting way without it being difficult and without it being like it was it's felt like it was authentic to the way someone would talk um, which I find a lot of poetry has felt more like it's trying too much um, which I don't really want either um, so yeah like I said I find it hard to describe poetry but I really enjoyed Cynthia Miller. My favourite book from the Women's Prize shortlist which I read in a vlog and again we'll leave linked in the cards above was The Sentence by Louise Erdrich and that was another one of my favourite books of the year. This tells the story of Tuki who is in a weird bizarre surreal uh, incident ends up going to prison for a crime she doesn't know she's committing and that's where the book begins but then we jump forward to when she has been released she's working in a bookshop in 2019 she's married it goes from November 2019 to November 2020 encompassing all of the things that actually happened in real life so um, the coronavirus pandemic and Black Lives Matter movement in June 2020 um, and that sort of thing it is also about the bookshop where she works is being haunted by the a recently deceased customer who had been very annoying. Um, the bookshop is an indigenous bookshop, Tuki is an indigenous woman, and the annoying customer had wanted to be indigenous and had tried hard to be a part of the community despite not being so. It is kind of another book without a huge plot, without um, much going on because I think if you hear that ghost story thing you think that's going to be like the central part of the book and it's not it just kind of bleeds in and out of importance as it happens in Tuki's life this is very much like a slice of life um, book that just follows Tuki's life for a year but I love the way that Louise Erdrich writes I think it's really warm and really clever she talks about a lot of like social issues like I was saying Black Lives Matter but also about being an indigenous person and about incarceration in the US but she does it in a way that doesn't feel 
feel didactic or doesn't feel like it is trying to make you learn something. It feels very centered in someone's life and very grounded and I really enjoyed that. I think that the characters were all incredibly warm, particularly Chiki and her husband. Um, and I love their relationships and the way that they were allowed to be like flawed difficult people um but not not to the extent of some of these other books they were very likable characters um at the same time uh, i liked the way that she talked about um indigenous traditions and the way that different indigenous people relate to their history and their traditions i thought that that was very an interesting topic that was explored and yeah overall i just felt like it was like a warm hug of a book one i read when i was reading the jalak prize shortlist i think which i will again leave linked in the cards above is keeping the house by Chi chin this was a uh, like interesting weird kind of book that i really enjoyed um and i know i don't think anyone else I don't think I know anyone else who's read it and enjoyed it, um, but I really did. It's about Turkish and Turkish Cypriot community in North London. The main character is a woman whose uh, partner has gone to prison um, and she's trying to get his heroin out of Turkey and into the UK. And it's set in the 90s and the early 2000s. And we follow the woman and her daughter um, and as her daughter goes from being a child up into a teenager. And it's very focused on this community. Again, feels very like a slice of life. Um, we go into various different parts of this community um the like a corner shop and the setting up are uh, and this kind of like gangster business that's running this community um the, with a like protection protectionism racket so it sounds like it's going to be quite dark because it's dealing with like drug dr uh, drug gangs and things um and it does go there with like things about like sexual assault again child sexual assault um but it is also a very very funny book um with a lot of like absurdist humor in it um it's written in a kind of weird disjointed way um and that where there are like bits of translation written like in the margins and stuff which i found really interesting and it was so close to this community i think the teacher chin must know this community really well because it really brought it to life i think i said in the vlog that i could really see this being like a channel for mini series um because it has that kind of darkness and grittiness but also that humor um that i think would work really well on tv i could really see it standing up and it had so many like references to mid 2000s things that I really <laughs> resonated with as someone who was like I went to secondary school in 2004 so I think I'd have been a younger than the people in these books but it felt very London in a way a lot of books set in London don't feel very London to me and I don't know because they're always set like mid 30s professionals in London whereas this felt like much more down to what the London I recognise um, which I really enjoyed reading in books too. It was a really vibrant and alive book with a lot of humour in it. Another one that's a bit weird and dark which apparently is my thing this year, the books I love most um, have been stark, weird and dark which is not the way I would have described my taste before. Um, anyway this one I'm talking about now is The Vegetarian by Han Kang and I mean it's no real surprise that I am um, talking about this book. Everybody I know who's read this book has raved about it so um, I'm not exactly the first person but I really loved it. I read it when I was reading Korean fiction for the Koreathon which I will leave again linked in the cards above um, and it was my favourite book that I read for that. I absolutely loved it. It's a short little book about a woman who stops eating meat is essentially the premise. She has a horrible nightmare and she stops eating meat which in Korea is weird uh, to begin with but it's not just that she stops eating meat she kind of withdraws from um, the conventions of society and not eating meat is kind of a representative of that but there are lots of other ways that she kind of removes herself from what is expected of her um, and we see it from the perspective of her husband who is a real dick her sister's husband and then her sister as she gets progressively sicker and sicker and um, they the ways that they kind of don't view her as a full person and they want to like utilize her rather than allowing her to be herself and I think that that's part of the way that she's withdrawing from society and the expectations on women. This book took me a little while to get into. The first section I really didn't enjoy the writing style but by the time I got to the second section I realised that was more because of the character from whose perspective it was written and that made me like it a whole lot more because the voice changed so much between the first and second section, between the first perspective and the second perspective, that I could see the skill of the writing and of the translation. The voice that had grated on me so much was because the character was terrible uh, and that so that was really well portrayed. Um, it's another one where a lot of like weird things happen that are that feel very uncomfortable um and unexplained really but i 
really enjoyed it. I felt myself really immersed in it. I found it really compelling and it made me want to keep turning the pages. It felt like a really gripping read, which not a lot of the books that I've read this year have had that for me. But this one felt just so compelling and so I couldn't stop reading it. This is not a book with like great developed characters. It's a book that's more like about ideas, but I have also been enjoying that this year. And I think of those, The Vegetarian is probably my favourite example of that. Another book that I've loved this year, and I'm not exactly the first person to talk about how good this book is, is I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. Um, very famous autobiography, uh, the first of Maya Angelou's seven kind of semi-fictionalised autobiographies about her life. Uh, this one goes from the age of like five to 15. It's very much set in her childhood. And it talks about growing up, uh, being raised by her grandma and her uncle in this house in the south, in the American South, in the 1930s, I think. Um, 1920s and 30s, I think we're talking like depression era. Her coming to terms with being a, like, realising that she's a black girl in this culture. And then also her meeting her mother and father and going to uh, St. Louis and then to California. And the things that happened to her along the way, including some really serious sexual abuse. Again, um, it seems to be a bit of a theme in some of the books I've been reading this year. Um, but it is despite that despite that darkness that i've mentioned of the racism and of the of the sexual abuse um and of the being abandoned by her parents um there is still so much like warmth in this book and it reminded me a lot of books set in a similar time period that are children's books um obviously i wouldn't recommend this for children because of all the dark themes that i'm mentioning um but it is it has that kind of real uh, dedication to setting that really felt alive i could really see the house that she was living in and also the kind of humour and the tone um, and it's really beautifully lyrically written and thought that the interactions between the white community and her grandma were really well evoked they felt very powerful and i don't know what more i can really say about this that hasn't been said already because like i said it's a very famous book um and it is one that has been loved by people from james baldwin to barack obama so obviously those people have much more to say about this than i do but i did I'm glad that I finally got round to reading this. The next one is A General Theory of Oblivion by Jose Eduarda Agualusa, which I was reading when I was reading books from Central Africa, which again, I will leave linked in the cards above. And this is set in Angola. Um, and it is set at the beginning of the Angolan fight for independence and about these two Portuguese girls, one of whom has experienced extreme sexual violence back in Portugal and that's why she ended up in it following her sister and her husband to Angola and then this violence erupts and as Portuguese people they need to leave um, but instead of leaving she bricks herself into the apartment so that no one can come in and she doesn't know what's going on outside but then one day she meets a young boy who kind of climbs in over her balcony as far as I remember and he informs her of what's gone on outside and how everything has changed of course of the 30 years that she's been bricked into this apartment um, we follow a lot of like the ways that she manages to survive on her own in in that situation um, and then we also follow a like, criminal political group um, outside um, as they go through what has been happening um, and it's another one that has kind of bizarre things that happen like there's a singing pygmy hippopotamus um, in a dance hall at one point um, it's yeah it's about the kind of bizarreness of the political upheaval and um, a country that feels unstable and doesn't know like where where you are um, obviously it's based on real life events for a woman who actually bricked herself into her apartment um, and that it's really bizarre I didn't expect that but it's very short um, and really weird and really engaging I found like the strangeness really drew me through this book felt very evocative of the setting and I really enjoyed the, the relationship the interactions between this young boy and the old woman who had worked herself into the apartment I thought she wasn't old to begin with but it covered 30 years Um, all the kind of bizarre again like kind of uh, farcical elements that happen where just weird things happen and it's not what you were expecting um, and I really love that from this book. The final book on my list is the only non-fiction and that is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer uh, and again another book that has been highly praised and loved so I'm sure you don't need much from me um, but this is Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teaching of Plants. Robin Wall Kimmerer is a botanist um, and she talks through various different things from a 
polluted uh, lake in um, an indigenous community um, and the ways that the big business nearby polluted that lake and the ways that they treated the people who, for whom this was a sacred place uh, and it also there's a whole chapter about her clearing out her pond and learning to work with nature um, for the pond and walking through a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest as well in a rainstorm which was just one of the most beautiful things ever that I've ever read. Um, it combines really beautiful nature writing with talks about climate change and talks about um, treat it, the way that Indigenous people treat the land um, and Indigenous celebrations as well of the land which I thought were quite interesting because it reminded me of some of the like traditional um, European festivals as well like um, wassailing and things like that um, that don't exist anymore. Yeah it's a, it's a climate change book um, and it's a nature writing book but it's one with a lot of like grit and heart um, and it's incredibly beautifully written so I really enjoyed this one. Combining the ways that science and the objective approach can be combined with different forms of knowledge and different ways of understanding of the world. So those are the 10 books that I have loved most that I read from uh, January to June. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of them and what you thought and also what your favourite book was that you have read so far this year. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a like if you liked it and to subscribe. I put out new videos twice a week so I will see you again very soon. Uh, I will put some more videos here that I think you might be interested in watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye bye!